Okay, uh, so for today's class, uh, we will start our first chapter, uh, which is um, fundamentals. Uh, so for, for the subtopic, we have sets. And then other than sets, we also have We also have a sequence and series. And then uh, for the last uh, topic, we will have matrix, matrices. Okay, so let's go to the first uh, subsection first, which is set. So for, for set, Okay, so for set, um, so the definition for a set is any well-defined collections of object. The, the object of a set are called the elements or the member, the member of the set. Well-defined means that it is possible to decide if a given object belongs to the collection or not. Okay, so if we define that it's if it is well defined, it means that we can decide whether the object or the elements is belongs to the collection or not. If we are not sure, then we cannot. So for the example given And we know that we can define the collections of all IPTA. It means that we can list down. We can list down all the uh, all the IPTA um, in Malaysia. Okay. If we cannot, if, if we cannot uh, accept. Okay. So for for this example, we can list down. Oh, in Malaysia, it's obviously a, a set. Okay, and then here the collection of OPC students in semester three. For this, for the as well, for the second uh, here you can uh, you can uh, get the list of the names. Uh, uh, Oopsie students in semesters. Set here is very well defined. Okay. So that's why it is called set. Okay, uh, then for the elements representations. Normally the uppercase letter yeah. and for Lower case a letter such as uh, A, B, C, D is to denote the elements. Okay, and then uh, the elements uh, which uh, side the uh, I mean the elements of the sets are normally listed between a curly bracket. So so this is the bracket. Okay. So for, for this case here, uh, if there is no elements, uh, like uh, for the element, uh, sorry, so for this curly bracket, if there is no elements, then it is called uh, Is, uh, if there is no element, it is then called empty set. Okay. Uh, the order in which the element of a set are called, sorry, are listed is not important. So let's say there are three elements. 
in the set. So um, let's say we have A, B, C in the set. Uh, the order, uh, maybe you can put A first and then after that B and then after that C, or maybe you can actually write down C, C, D, sorry, C, uh, D, A, B, okay? Or just A, B, C, D, so it doesn't matter. So this, these two sets are actually the same set, okay? So the order of the elements inside the set, inside, uh, between the curly bracket, uh won't be um won't give any difference okay and then we have here repeated element in the listing of the elements of a set can be ignored so let's say there are a uh, 2d here so let's say you have 2d in this set so obviously this uh two metrics uh, sorry these two sets are also the same set even though if you count here maybe this is one two three four five and this one is one two three four okay but since uh uh here you have two uh d element okay instead of just uh one uh in the second uh, set uh we we still regard these two element as one uh sorry uh the same set okay because um because the repeated element doesn't uh give any difference it can be ignored okay and if x is an element of the set a then x can be written as x the elements of a if x is not an element of a then x can be written as x not the elements of A. Okay. Uh, so if X is the elements of A, we can write it as this notation here X, the element of A. And if X is not element of A, then it can be written as X, not the element of A. Okay. And then uh, sets can set themselves be elements of the other sets. Okay, uh, so let's uh, let's see uh, for for this uh, curly bracket here. The elements of it is also a set. Okay, so see why I say this is a set because. Here it contains the curly bracket. So it means that this is also a set itself. Okay. And this one as well. This one as well. So set can themselves be elements of the other sets. Okay. So it for, for this set here has three elements. One is A and then uh, uh, the set A and this one uh, uh, for the third one. Okay. Okay, element uh, representation. Okay, for the element representation, as I said before, the order doesn't uh, give any difference. Uh, it is not important. Okay, one, two, three uh, inside the curly bracket is the same as two, three, one, okay, or three, one, two. And then what else? Repeated doesn't uh, give any difference. Okay, uh, you can just ignore the two O here. Uh, B O K is the same as B O O K. Okay, and then what about this one? Q is uh, high. This is uh, high. Some says uh, this notation here. I think this should be high. Some says this is lambda. Okay. Uh, Let's uh, try to uh, search for it. For it. Okay. it should be I K H I.
sky symbol. Yeah, it is sky symbol. K not K H I C H I C H I sky sky symbol. So for chi, uh, such that chi is in between zero up to ten, and chi is odd number. Okay, if we say it is odd number, it means that it is uh integer, integer. Okay, not real. Okay. Odd means one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay. Uh, and then a Q here, uh, since it is defined as set, is the upper letter, uppercase letter. And then um, what else? Yeah. Uh, we have curly brackets uh, and the elements inside the curly brackets. Okay. And then uh, let's go to the finite set. Okay, because uh, for, for the set, we have uh, either finite sets or uh, infinite set as well. So let's go to the finite set first. Okay, a set X is called finite if it has an element. So for as for the example, uh, for this guy here, we have finite, uh, finite elements because there are we, we can count, we can count. There are like uh, five elements in the set, okay? So it is also a finite set, okay? A set X is called finite if it has N elements, where N is in natural number. So N, uh, the, uh, this symbol is defined for the natural number, okay? A set that is not finite is called infinite. N or the number of the elements of X of the set X or uh, this one, uh, the absolute value of X is called the number of elements of X. Okay, uh, the set that has no element in it is denoted either by null set. So this is null set or empty set. Okay, just curly bracket without any elements uh, in the curly brackets. Okay, so the elements of F are pencil, uh, pen, and eraser. F is a finite set because there are three elements in the set. You can count. You can count one, two, three. There are three elements in the set. Okay, and then if we uh, look at uh, the set H here, Okay, the, for the H, it is con, continuously many, continuously many or infinitely many, infinitely many elements uh, in the set. Uh, it starts from negative one, uh, even though it, it, it's, it's con, uh, it means that, I, I mean, it's still something that you can count, negative one, two, three, four, five, and uh, so forth, uh, but still there is no n uh, for this set. It is uh, so that's why h here is infinite. Okay, and then um, for j, uh, j is uh, the set that contains a such that okay, such that a is a letter in the phrase yes I do. Okay. Yes, I do. It's the letter in the face. Yes, I do. So uh, it means that if we list down uh, the letter, it will be uh, Y E S I D O. So it is also a finite set because it is not. It is not infinitely many. You can count. You can count and says that uh, after you count, uh, you can decide that. Uh, the elements, uh, sorry, uh, the, you, you can decide on how many elements of the set. So for this case, there are like one, two, three, four, five, six, six elements in the set. Okay. So that's it about uh, finite set. So let's go to the countable set. The set is called countable if the member of the set can be arranged in a set, sorry, in a list. 
with a second, first, sorry, first, second, third element, and the set can therefore be counted. Okay. So K crown, K is finite and countable. Okay. Uh, for L, uh, it start from uh, uh, from negative infinity here, and then one, two, oh, sorry, this is 12, 12, 24, 36. L is infinite, but it's still countable. Uh, uh, L is infinite, but it is still countable. Uh, if you look at here, you don't know where does it, it will uh, reach, okay? Because it will surely reach to negative infinity. Okay, uh, from the left, from the left here. But then you still count. Uh, if you look at here, well, it, you can see the patterns. It will be what negative. Sorry, uh, it, it, I think it will be zero. Okay, for for the next list here, it will be zero, and then you have negative twelve, and then you will have negative twenty four, and then you have negative thirty six, and then negative forty. So it means that it, you still can count. Okay, you still can count, but uh, the thing is, it is not finite. It is not finite because it will somehow goes to negative infinity. Okay, and then for M, M is the set X in R. So R is the real number. Okay, R is the real number. R such that negative uh, X is from negative 11 up to 14. Uh, and X is from negative 11 up to 14. If you look at here, um, how, how, how do you how, how do you think you're gonna count uh, the elements? You cannot count because uh, it will surely um, it will surely, it is not possible for you to count because uh, if, if you say that X is equal to 12.999, it's also in the set. Uh, if you say X is equal to 12.999999, it's also in the, in the set. So it is uncountable, you cannot count, okay? And then for P, uh, P is also um, also the set, uh, the real, uh, the set, uh, sorry, the elements of R, which is the real number. But uh, the difference between the, uh, the M and P here, instead of we have less than or equal to for M, we have just less than. And then uh, for, for the right hand side, instead of less than or equal to 14, we have just less than 14. So for this case, P is infinite. P is infinite. And then it is also uncountable. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. I hope uh, you can understand that well. Okay. And then let's go uh, to the... Uh, cardinality, okay. Cardinality, or uh, we can also say number of, and okay. If a set A has a distinct element, then n is called cardinality or the number of element, and denoted as n of A or the absolute value of A, okay. Uh, Okay, so here we have A uh, with the element of A is uh, sigma, delta, and lambda. So the elements of A, uh, the number of the elements of A is equal to 3. Okay. And then if you look at B, uh, B uh, is the set where, uh, 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 here x is uh, defined as x is a letter in the statement esok cuti, esok cuti, 
So if you list down, it will be E S O K C U T I. There is no repeated elements uh, in the in the set. So uh, you can just count it, and uh, you can say that the number of element is equal to eight. Okay. And then for C, months that have at least 28 days, uh, at least, at least. So it means that uh, obviously we have 12 months that contains 28 days because the minimum, the minimum days, uh, number of days uh, in a month is obviously 28, uh, which is in April, okay? And then uh, let's go to the set equality. Okay. For the set equality, A is called the same set as B. So A is equal to B if and only if, or you can just write down IFF. IFF stands for if and only if. They have exactly the same elements. Okay. Uh, the, the, if I, the if and only if. Uh, can also be represented as this symbol. If and only if. If and only if A is a uh, subset to B, not only that, it uh, the B also subset to A. Okay? So if A is subset to B and B is also subset to A, then we call A and B are the same, the same element. Okay, so let's uh, look at the example. Uh, let A is equal to uh, the set uh, that contains G, U, L, A, and B is the, the set that contains G, A, U, L. Okay, and uh, we also have another set here, which is C. Uh, it contains L A G U. Okay, uh, if you check um, for the subset here, you you know that uh, A is obviously subset to B, and B is also subset to A. So it means that. Uh, it means that A is obviously equal to B and for C as well. A is subset to C and C is also subset to A. So that's why A is equal to B and it is equal to C. So that is a uh, set equality. Okay, then uh, we go to the universal set. Okay, universal set. Okay. A universal set, uh, which is denoted as, uh, I think this is Xi. Okay, so this is Xi. Not Chi, but Xi. Okay. Uh, um, maybe, uh, how, how do we spell this? Is it Z? Z H I or uh, X I. Okay, let's check. It is uh, XI. XI. Yeah. It's XI. No, it's not uh, ZHI. It's not this one. It's XI. XI. A universal set, uh, XI, is a set containing all objects for which the discussion is meaningful. In Venn diagram, the universal set xi will be denoted by a rectangle, okay? While set within xi will be denoted by circle, okay? So let's look at here. We have all uh, district in Perak, 
Okay. Uh, that represents xi. So xi here is represented as rectangle, uh, which represent all these three in para. While uh, we have here A, which can be represented as a circle. And the elements of this matrix A is this one. Uh, manjung, uh, manjung, Kinta, and uh, Larut. Okay. Okay, uh, subset. If every element of A is also an element of B, that is whenever X is the element of A, X is also the element of B. Then A is a subset of B and can be written as A subset B. If A is not a subset of B, then A is uh, what we represent not subset of B as uh, this symbol here, okay? Uh, and an improper subset, okay? So this one, this symbol uh, is called improper subset, is a subset containing every element of the original set. A proper subset uh, contains some, but not all the elements of elements of the original sets, okay? So for this one, A, um, A, uh, for, for this, it is proper subset, okay? Uh, there is no dash um, below uh, this uh, subset symbol, so it is proper subset. So for this proper subset, uh, we can uh, confirm that there are still some elements of B which are not uh, the elements of A, okay? But then if we have an improper subset, like this one, A improper subset to B, okay, we can confirm that all element of A also the elements of, so this is an improper subset, okay? And then uh, for this one, A, uh, if you look at here, A is not a subset of B. A is not a subset of B. Why is that? Obviously, because there are some elements in A which does not contain A in B. Okay, so that's why it is not a subset of B. Okay, any question up to this? Can you uh, understand? Okay, class, Afik, okay. Okay, Raja. Faiz, okay. Okay, Roda. Okay, yeah. okay, and then uh, let's go to subset. If a set contains n elements, then the number of subset of the set is 2 to the power of n. If A is a set, then the set of all subset of A is called the power set of A and denoted as P of A. Okay, how many subset does C, uh, does the set C, which uh, have the elements A, B, C, D have? Write all the possible subsets. So how many elements uh, that C have? One, two, three, four. So in this case, uh, N of C is equal to four. So based on this uh, statement here, the number of subset for this set C will be 2 to the power of 4. Write all the possible uh, subset. So there are 16 subset. Okay, so P of C will be what? Uh, will be first obviously down set and then we will have A, we have B, we have C, we have D and then we have the set that contains A, B the set that contains SC, the set that contains AD, BC, BD, CD, ABC, ABD, ACD, BCD, and ABCD. So these are the power sets of A, okay? And if you count, uh, we will 
we will have 16, 16 subset, uh, which are the element of this power, power set of A. Okay. And then uh, for the intersection, interse intersection of A and B is the set of all elements that are in A and B and denoted by A intersect B. Okay. I think this one should be should be dot. It means that it is the stopping. But the lah. So this is a new statement. So A uh, intersect B is uh, denoted as X such that X is in A and X is in, in B. Okay. Uh, so the key word here is N. The key word for, for this intersect is N. Okay. And then let P is uh, the element, uh, sorry, P is the set that contains uh, Z, I, L, A, and Q is the set that contains S, U, R, I, Y, A, and R is uh, the set that contains A, D, W, Y, H. Okay, and then if P intersect Q, it will be uh, the set that contains in A and the set, sorry, the elements that contains in, in Q as well. So is there any, uh, any elements that also the elements in P as well as the elements in Q? If you look at here, you have I, I, which is uh, contains in both sides, and then what else? A, A as well. So uh, the element for P intersect Q will be I A, and then Q intersect R, Q intersect R will be what? A, so we have A here, and then what else? Y, yeah, Y, what about you? No, because you contains in the set Q, but not in set R. So there are just two elements, uh, which are A and Y. And then for R and P, for R and P, uh, the elements which contains in both sets is only A. It's only A, okay? Okay, so that is in the side. Uh, let's go to union. Union, uh, if you look at uh, the definition for the union, uh, the keyword instead of N, you have here OR. Okay, so this is uh, the keyword for union. Okay, so for P union Q, you have to list down the element from P as well as the element from, from Q as well. So Z, I, L, A, S, U, R, I, Y, A. But since uh, you, you already know that uh, the repeated element um, won't give any difference, so that's why we won't repeat I and we won't repeat A. Okay, so that's why it is just S U R Y. Okay, and Q union R S U R I Y A D W. Yeah, you can list down here S U R I and then Y Y A uh, D W Y. H. Okay, so that is Q union R. Okay, and then difference. Okay, so for the difference of the set, okay, let A and B be set. The set difference, or denoted as this one, uh, is like a minus. Okay, A minus B, uh, or we call 
call it as A difference B, is the set of all elements of A that are not in B. Okay, so A minus B or A different B in this case it will be the X which is the element on, of A and X is not the element of B. Okay, so let's look at the example. Let A is the element of, sorry, the other set that contains elements 1, 2, 3, 4. And then B is the set that contains 2, sorry, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so A difference B will be what? The element which is, the, the element which are in A but not in B. So it will be one, two. So it will be one, two. Okay. One, two. Because three, four are also the elements in, in B. Okay. So that's why the elements for A difference B will just be one, two. And then B uh, difference uh, A will be five, six. Okay. Five, six. You, you cannot regard 3, 4 because 3, 4 are also the elements of, of A. Okay. Okay, then uh, let's go to the symmetric difference. Okay. For the symmetric difference, let A and B be set. Okay. The symmetric difference, uh, which is uh, denoted by this symbol here, okay, is the set of those elements in either a or B, but not A intersect B. Okay. So let X be, I think this one should be, uh, this is not correct. It should be uh, the set of one, two, three, three, four. Okay. So it means that uh, for for A here, so for one here is also the elements of this set. Okay. And Y is uh, the set that contains three, four, five, six. Okay. Then X symmetric difference uh, Y, okay, will be one, two, five, six. Okay. Because uh, if you look at the definition, the set of those elements in either A or B, but not in A, you A. Uh, intersect B. So obviously, if I were you, I will check for X uh, intersect B first. What, what will be A intersect B in this case? A intersect B will be, will be 3, 4. 3, 4, isn't it? 3, 4. Uh, but then uh, here, uh, if, if you look at the, for, for this one, the set of those elements in either A or B. So it means that we want to find X union B as well. So X union B, so this is three. Uh, A, X, sorry, we use, we, we should use Y instead of B. Why we use B? So this one should be Y should be y. Okay. So x union y should be 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6. Okay. So the symmetric difference is the set of those elements in A union B, but not in A intersect B. So the, uh, the answer should be Three, uh, sorry, one, two, one, two, five, six. Okay. I think uh, we can also write uh, the symmetric difference as x union y minus minus x intersect y. Isn't it? What do you think? Yeah, can write is we, we can write 
uh, the symmetric difference as x union y minus or the difference different x intersect y. Okay, that's why uh, it is a need for us to find this uh, elements first. The, this set of x intersect y as well as x union y. Okay, uh, let's go to the next topic, subtopic, which is set complement. If xi is a universal, is a universal set containing A, then xi minus A is called the complement of A and denoted by A prime. And A prime is defined as X, the set that contains X, such that X is uh, the element of xi or universal set, but X is not the element of A. By a Venn diagram, so Venn diagram for the universal set is represented as a rectangle, okay? And then a circle is represented uh, for a subset. So let's uh, denote this circle here as a subset A, okay? So the complement of A, which is denoted as A prime here, is all the elements which are the elements in the universal set, but not the element in the set B. Okay? okay and then let uh, Xi is uh, the set that contains F-O-R-G-I-V-E, and A is... Um, a is the set that contains F O R, then A uh, prime, or uh, we call it as complement of A, is uh, the set that contains other than uh, this uh, this uh, elements. Okay, uh, so obviously uh, it should be G I G I V E. Cartesian product. I think let's rest for five minutes before, before we continue. Okay. It's great. Doctor, huh? can we go to the slide symmetric difference? Okay. Oh, okay. I want to see. Okay, okay, doctor. Boleh. Okay, boleh.
Okay. Okay, let's start. Um, Cartesian product. Okay, for the Cartesian product, uh, let A and B be sets. The Cartesian product of A and B denoted as A. Uh, this is like a, a cross product. Okay, cross product B is the set of all ordered pairs, uh, two element set formed by taking A in A and B in B in all possible way. Okay, A, a Cartesian product uh, B uh, is the set that contains uh, Cartesian uh, this is uh, how, how we call this uh, ordered pairs. Okay, so this is ordered pairs A and B, A comma B, uh, such that A is the elements of A and B is the elements of of B. Okay, so if you have A, is the set that contains A and B, and then we you have B. Uh, which is uh, the set that contains X, Y, Z, and C is the set that contains E and F, find A Cartesian product B and A Cartesian product B and then Cartesian product C. Okay. Uh, so A Cartesian product B uh, is... So for this one, A Cartesian product B. So if we list down, it will be what? A X, well, you, you list down the ordered pairs, A X, A Y, A Z, and then what else? Uh, B X, B Y, and then B Z. So that's why you have six elements in it. A X, A Y, A Z, B X, B, Y, and Z. Okay, so for A, B, A, Cartesian product B, and then Cartesian product C, okay, you will have what? Uh, you have A, X, A, X, E, and then uh, A, X, F, okay, and then uh, for the third one, A, Y, E, A, Y, F, okay, and then A, Z, E, and A, Y, sorry, A, Z, F, okay, and then after that, you start with B, B, X, E, B, X, F, B, Y, E, B, Y, F, B, Z, E, B, Z, F. Okay. Good. So these are the elements uh, for uh, A, Cartesian product B, Cartesian product C. So the ordered pairs um, uh, for, for the for this set here, for, for the Cartesian product of three sets, will be uh, will be uh, three elements for for each for each ordered pairs. Okay. And then uh, let's go to real number set. Okay, or the real number set. So, like before. Uh, you already know that natural numbers are also called counting counting numbers. Okay, you, when you say counting, it means that uh, it is the number that uh, that uh, you can count. So let's say it's, uh, so. Obviously, if you count, you will start from one. You don't start from zero, isn't it? You start from one. One, two, three, four five, six, so on, 100, and so on, what, uh, up to 1,000, and then so on, okay? 
and it doesn't stop. It is infinite set. Infinite, infinite set. But it is also, but it's still countable. Countable because you can count. Okay. Uh, then uh, for the whole number, for the whole number, it start from zero. The zero, you will have one, two, three, four, and five, and so on. Okay. So if if you look at uh, the similarity of whole number, which is represented as W and N, which is represented for natural number, the the only difference is only that. For the whole number, it contains the element zero, isn't it? So that's why the whole number is actually the set of uh, natural number union the set that contains zero, zero element. And then for the integer, integer is normally represented as Z. Okay, so Z. Uh, for for z from the left hand side, it start from negative infinity, okay, and then uh, it will uh, uh, negative infinity, and then uh, it will be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, and and so forth up to up to infinity, okay. So it means that it is uh, the set. Z here or the set of the integer here is actually uh, can be represented as Z super index negative. So it means that uh, the set of negative integer. So this is actually Z super index negative. Z super index negative, and this one is Z super index positive. Z super index negative union with the set zero, union with the Z super index positive, or the set of positive number. And then we also have rational numbers. For the rational numbers, uh, it is re represented as Q. Okay. Uh, and we know that uh, the rational number is uh, obviously represented as um, SP divided by Q, okay? SP divided by Q, where P is always an integer and Q is also an integer set that Q, so, oh yeah set that q cannot be zero if q is zero then this uh, q uh, this uh, capital letter q uh, uppercase letter q won't be defined okay because we know that uh, any number if you divide with zero it will be undefined okay so that's why for Q, it is the set of any integer except that it cannot be zero. For the irrational number, if the number is irrational, then the, the similar representation is not, is not repeating. Okay, Q prime, so for if Q is represented for the rational number, the irrational number is represented as Q prime. Okay, uh, Q prime, uh, which is uh, represented as X such that X is a decimal number that neither end, okay, neither ended nor repeated. Okay, so uh, actually, uh, there there is um, connections between this rational number and a real number. You can represent real number as uh, as the universal set, okay? As the universal set, okay? Where um, the Q, the Q is a set in this universal set, and the Q prime is this irrational number. 
So it means that for the real number, uh, universal site that represent the real number, uh, it is either Q or Q prime. Okay, uh, we still have uh, another two slides before I think we can stop. And for the next week, uh, we will start a new topic, uh, which is sequence and series. That's that's uh, that's better because uh, it's already approaching twelve uh, over plus. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, real number. Real, real numbers R, okay, like I said before, R is actually the union between rational number and the irrational number. So this is rational number, this is rational number, and for the Q prime, it is irrational, rational number. And then uh, for the positive real number, you are you have R uh, super index positive, which is X in R, where X is always greater than zero. Okay. Uh, for the negative real number, R uh, R super index negative, super index uh, minus here, yeah? super index negative, uh, which is uh, the set uh, is. The set that contains x in R, where x is less in zero, less than zero. Okay, so R is a positive real number union the set zero, the set that contains zero, a union uh, the positive positive real number, and uh, and then. Uh, it's stated here as well that n is subset to w. Okay, obviously this is correct because you know that n is natural number. It is always subset to whole number. Why is that? Because w is the union with uh, union of natural number and the set that contains zero. So w is the set. Con, uh, that contains the set zero union this natural number, this natural number. So obviously n will be subset to this whole number. So that's why n is subset to this whole number. And then whole number is subset to z. Why is that? Uh, because z it could be positive or negative, isn't it? So obviously, a uh, whole number, which is uh, in this case, is always positive because uh, it starts from zero, zero, one, two, three, up to um, up to infinity, uh, is also the elements of z. It's also the elements of z. Z could be any neg uh, negative. Uh, it start from negative infinity up to up to infinity. Okay, so that's why W is subset to Z. Okay, and then Z, Z uh, sorry, Z is subset to Q. Why is that? Well, why do you think uh, it says here Z subset to Q? Because uh, from the definitions of Q, Q is P divided by Q, isn't it? P divided by Q, P is uh, the elements of Z, Q is the element of Z, except that it cannot be zero. But what if you take Q is equal to one? If Q is equal to one, then, um, then our elements of Q will be, uh, will be, uh, will be the, in, uh, the integer, isn't it? Will be the, integer. So that's why Z is the subset of Q. Because when Q is equal to 1, this Q, this Q is equal to 1, then uh, we have Q 
the capital letter Q here will be just integer. P divided by 1 is also equal to integer P. Isn't it? Okay, so that's why it is upside to Z. And then, sorry, Z subset to Q. Uh, and then uh, Q is obviously subset to R because our R is the universal universal set okay and then for the prime number okay from the for, for the prime number so if you try to represent the whole thing here as a venn diagram okay you know that each each of every set here is actually the set of q isn't it the set of q so it means that uh, there are other sets inside this circle, this circle here. Uh, but there are no uh, other sets in this Q prime. This Q prime. There are no other sets. All, all the natural numbers, the integers, the what else? The whole numbers are all contains in this in this Q, this Q parts. The Q prime, uh, no no other sets. Okay. Is it clear? Nazira, okay? Yes. Okay. And then prime number, prime x is a positive number, x is not 1, and x has a no factor other than 1 and itself. So start from 2, 3, 5, 7, and then what else? Okay. I think you are already know about this prime number during your secondary school. And then composite number. Composite is uh, a positive numbers except uh, except for 1 and x is not the prime number. So 4, 6, 8, 9, 10 and so on. Okay. I think that's it. Oh, we still have some. Uh, another slide. Set identity. So for the set identity, A intersect. Uh, this is uh, the symbol for the universal set. Xi, isn't it? Xi. A intersect xi is uh, set A itself. A union, this is empty set. Okay, A union empty set is obviously the set A. Domination loss, A union uh, xi is uh, xi. Okay, A intersect empty set will be empty set. And then for the laws, A union A will be A, A intersect A will be A. Complementary law, A prime, and then we have another prime will be back to A, will be back to A. Uh, commutative laws, we have A union B will be B union A, and A intersect B will be B intersect A. Associative law, a union B union C will be A union B union C. A intersect B intersect C will be A intersect B intersect C. And then for the distributive law, okay, uh, A union B union C will be A union B, okay, A union B, and then intersect A union C. Okay, the segregate is each of the component of for the set. Okay, A union B and then intersect A union C. Okay, and then A intersect B inter uh, sorry union C will be A intersect B union A intersect C. And then you have the Morgan's law. So the Morgan's is for the complement. So this is prime here. Prime is denoted for the complement. So A intersect B complement will be A prime union B prime. 
Okay. And then A union B prime uh, will be A prime intercept B prime. Absor absorption uh, loss will be A union A intercept B, which is, okay, can you, uh, uh, if you look at here, it will be almost like uh, this distributive laws. If if you try to uh, list down, like in the distributive law, what will you have? A union B, sorry, yes, it is uh, A. A union A intersect a union A union try to do this absorption loss okay you try to do it like the distributive law you will have A union A okay A union A Okay, and then intersect, intersect A, set A union, union B, isn't it? Yes. So for A union A, it will be A. Uh, and then you have intersect with A union B. So what will you will have? A union B. A union B will obviously be A intersect. A intersect A union B. Can, can we uh, expand this by using this part as this uh, distributive law again? So it will be what? A intersect A union How do we get absorption law? A intersect A union A intersect B. A intersect A is obviously A. Union, okay, A intersect A is obviously A. Uh, but then union with A intersect B. Okay, uh, homework, eh? homework, uh, bolehlah uh, try to look at how they got, they got this absorption loss. Okay, boleh ah? Then we have complements law. Uh, for the complements law, A union A prime, uh, which is equal to the universal set. And then A intersect A prime is, uh, will be a null set. Lah. Null set. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, for the next week, uh, we will start with the sequence and series as well as matrices okay i think that's that's all for today thank you very much for having me uh during your sunday okay. thank you doctor thank you doctor yeah ada soalan ke tak ada tak ada so nanti uh, discuss lah dalam WhatsApp eh. Uh, please uh, find how you get absorption loss. How, how do you explain this absorption loss? Yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor.